Hey everybody, this is Joe Gilder from HomestudioCorner.com and I've got a video today that I want to show you a little bit about how to use the pencil tool um, and panning to create sort of a moving effect with your tracks. This works particularly well with pads and synthesizer tracks, but you can do it with pretty much anything, background vocals, uh, lead vocals if you want, um, just depends on what you're going for. But what we have here, uh, I've got expand open in Pro Tools, and I've just got a, just, a, just a single chord playing out here. Okay, and that's fine. This may be some sort of a kind of a more ethereal track, and there's lots going on, or maybe this is just the backing pad to a big full-on production rock chorus or something. Either way, it, it sounds fine by itself, but what if we wanted to make this more interesting and um, create some some attention, draw, draw your attention to it when you're listening. Well, there's something that I discovered years ago that I use ever so often, and it's, it's kind of cool. So what it involves is, first off, the pencil tool and also uh, the panning of the track itself. So to do this, to pull this off, we need to come over here and change our view. So we want to look at audio pan. And as you can see here, this single line represents our panning for this track. So if we pan things to the left, you'll see that line goes up, and to the right, it goes down. So as you can see here, it's labeled, down is right, up is left. So it's anything directly in the center is right there. Now, what can we do with that? Well, there's not a lot. I mean, we could automate pan, so we could say, have this section be panned uh, to the left, and then this next section could be panned to the right. Well, let's grab it right here. And that's one thing you can do. So you can come through like this. Okay, but that's kind of boring, right? Um, so let's get rid of that. Well, what can we do? Well, there's a tool that a lot of folks don't use a lot in Pro Tools, and it's the pencil tool. So if you come up here and take a look, this gives you a pencil. And it defaults to freehand, as you can see. And so it lets you just kind of draw in, you know, whatever you want on the track. And that's fine. Um, I'm not really interested in that, though. What I want to look at is the triangle tool, or even the square tool here. What this does, when you click and drag, it's going to create a triangle. And the points of the triangle are going to be based on what you have your grid set to. So, for instance, right now, we've got our grid set to eighth notes. And that's based on the tempo of the song. So whatever your grid is set to, if we look at the grid here, um, it's going to make a triangle point for each eighth note. Now let me show you what I mean. When you come in here, you just hold down and click, and then drag across and lift up a little bit, and you'll see it's creating a curve, a triangle curve. And as, you, as I drag it up, it makes it more dramatic, and down it makes it less from left to right. And then as you can see, every point on the triangle is an eighth note apart. So now let's take a listen and see what this sounds like. It's kind of cool, right? Now it's got a little bit of like a rotary sound, like you ran it through a rotary speaker. Perhaps you don't have a plugin that does that, or uh, you just want a way to do that without having to mess with plugins. That's one way to do it. If we change it to 16th notes and draw it again, maybe make it a little more dramatic here. Let's listen to that. So it definitely grabs the attention. It's probably too much, but it's, it's kind of fun to, to listen to. 30-second notes will be even more dramatic. So as you can hear, you're not changing the patch of the sound at all, and suddenly um, you're introducing all these kind of effects to the sound that are pretty cool. Now if we change it to square, it's going to do the same thing as the triangle, except it's just a rounded or squared off top and bottom. So instead of transitioning between the two, it just jumps from one setting to the other. So it'll sound a little choppier. And then an eighth note sounds like this. But as you can probably tell, I like the triangle a little better. It tends to um, tends to sound a little more smooth and still jumps back and forth pretty well. And even if you go crazy with like a 64th note or something, it can be pretty fun.
Okay, so that should uh, open up your mind to a lot of possibilities with your songs. If you've got some parts that are just kind of sitting there holding down the, the background, try adding some some life to them by using some different panning automation features. Uh, I will warn you, it's easy to try to overdo things, so be careful not to. If you have too many things moving around in your mix, um, it'll just sound, it'll sound kind of confusing and nothing will seem to be held down in place. You need certain things to always be in certain places in your mix. But when you have maybe one or two things, like a pad for instance, you can, if it's just a couple things that are moving, it's okay and you can get away with it and pr- produce some pretty interesting sounds. So again, this is Joe from homestudiocorner.com. Got any questions? Feel free to leave a comment on the video or over on the blog at homestudiocorner.com. Thanks for watching.